Ubuntu Web is a new Linux distro that supposedly offers an open source alternative to Google's Chrome OS, which is no small task to undertake, so I can't wait to check this one out. Hello, hello, I'm Jay and you're watching DS Tech Media, where we cover everything from tech news to hardware, but specializing in Linux and open source. So uh, recently I started seeing uh, lots of articles and talk about Ubuntu Web, which I had never heard of before, and they all seem to indicate that it's trying to compete with Google's Chrome OS and I was intrigued because that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, Chrome OS is Google's operating system mostly only found on Chromebooks which are affordable laptops that fall into or around the web top web book space. They typically have lower system specs notably smaller hard drives because the OS mostly uses web applications and cloud storage solutions. Originally, Chrome OS was built around Google's Chrome web browser and Google's web applications like Google Docs, Google Drive, Google Photos, etc. and so forth. But over time, Chrome OS grew an entire ecosystem of third-party apps from independent developers and major players like Adobe. Though the applications are built on browser technologies, the actual OS uses the Linux kernel to run on its hardware, and developers even created tools like Crouton to allow users to run Ubuntu Linux inside of Chrome OS. With the huge success of Chromebooks, Google expanded the OS with more offline capabilities and even released the Chromebook Pixel, a high-end Chromebook with performance specs and premium features. This also added the ability to run Android applications in Chrome OS. Android, like Chrome OS, also uses the Linux kernel at its core. Enter Ubuntu Web Remix. Uh, it's an unofficial flavor created by Rudra Saraswat, who's also the maintainer of the Ubuntu Unity project. And it's a project that's keeping Ubuntu's abandoned Unity 7 desktop alive and also modernized. Okay, so now I'm going to boot this up as a VM. This is Ubuntu Web Remix based on Ubuntu 2004. And I want to show you give you an idea of how quickly it boots up because performance is part of the appeal here and that's it it's already booted up it's pretty quick in my opinion especially for a VM and here we have a UI obviously based on GNOME in fact it's based on GNOME 3.36 the developer has claimed that he's pared it down for performance and it should be optimized to be lightweight and run on lower end hardware like Chromebooks. And to give you an idea of how lightweight the system is, I'm using 1.1 gigs of memory of a total of 1.9, and that's gig B bytes, not gigabytes, which 1.9 is equal to two gigabytes. And really, I'm only using about five or 600 megabytes because half of that is in cache. And unlike Chrome OS, everything in Ubuntu Web is built around Firefox instead of Chrome. 
and if we look at the apps that come included there is no GNOME software or Ubuntu app store but there is the open web store and if we click that it opens this website and we've got several categories to select from under education there is Google Classroom music there's SoundCloud social networking Twitter Mastodon Instagram Facebook for streaming YouTube and DTube and web services open desktop and open desktop files so if we click the DTube app it opens a Firefox browser and takes us to the DTube website the same is true for Mastodon for Twitter and for SoundCloud now they refer to these as web apps but to me they're just shortcuts to the websites so I, I don't really understand that they even have on their official Ubuntu web github repository a web app creator and here we have some documentation let's check this out and yeah going by this documentation on creating web app it appears that these are literally just shortcuts with icons to the website that they correspond with and this is the web app developer kit and it, this uh, doesn't seem to be much of anything I'm kind of confused by the purpose of even having this one thing I will say is that the system is very smooth and snappy and responsive Uh, another thing that you're going to notice is that we have in this top row here, everything begins with E. And these are apps. We've got calendar contacts, email, files, notes, photos, and tasks. And if we click one of these, we are taken here, which is just a login with very little information. However, at the bottom, you can find something that says E Foundation. And... The eFoundation apparently is all about a uh, de-googled app mobile ecosystem. It's mostly for cell phones. And there's a bunch of smartphones, I guess, that you can buy with the EOS, as it's called, installed. But obviously this doesn't really apply to us. You can, however, sign up for a free eFoundation account, which will get you your credentials, which I've already done. And I'm going to log in and show you what that means and immediately upon logging into this I realized that this was a Nextcloud instance because I have my own Nextcloud server and they're offering you a one gig account for free they don't even have any premium levels as far as I can tell at the moment but you get file storage uh, there is an email built in and you get your own email through E dot email uh, there's contacts calendar photos notes tasks and the activity just basically shows you everything you've done through this Nextcloud platform just like any other Nextcloud so there's nothing really that unique about this although it is kind of cool that they chose to include it I really think that they need uh, some sort of introduction app or documentation to make this worthwhile i mean if i didn't know what this was you know i may not have even figured this out to show you so all of these icons will take you to that next cloud account local files as you would expect opens up your local file system and then you might notice that there's also another calendar icon, another files icon, another email icon, two calculator icons. And the reason for that is these are links to the included Android applications via Anbox. Let's go ahead and open Anbox. So you can actually run Android applications on Ubuntu Web Remix through a technology called Anbox. And this is actually pretty cool because it's pre-installed. I've actually used Anbox before. I've installed it on 
elementary OS. And what Mbox does is it actually runs an Android application layer using your built-in Linux kernel. So it's, it's like a legitimate Android, but it's just for running individual applications rather than the entire Android user environment and everything like that. And this is what we get out of the box, which is just the basic Android apps. And traditionally, you would install this on Ubuntu as a snap package, but I've found out that snap packages are not included at all in Ubuntu Web Remix, and the developer has actually provided Anbox uh, via dev files and all of its dependencies are provided that way and granted you cannot do much with it as it is you just have the basic stuff so you got a calculator a calendar clock contacts email client a file browser photo gallery a music player the android settings and basically the android web viewer which is a web rendering engine for websites via Android. But you can install uh, APKs, which are what Android apps are distributed as. And you can, in fact, install Google Play services and the Google Play Store. And here we have the settings. And here is the WebView browser tester. And it works. Okay, so here is a Linux Uprising article about installing Google Play Store and enabling ARM via libhoudini for Anbox. And if you do want to try this, I would like to note down here that this user ran into issues on Ubuntu 20.04 and latest Anbox, but he was able to change one line of code and fix that. And I will provide a link in the description to this article for those that want to try it. When I started this video, I was planning on uh, guiding you through this, but I have changed my mind on it because I want to review Ubuntu Web Remix as it is. I just wanted to make sure you know that you can get more out of Anbox, as I think that Anbox is probably the shining star feature of this unusual Linux distribution. Other than that, you've got an archive manager, document scanner, system monitor, the terminal. Uh, I'm not sure what run a file does or what remove web app does okay here are the web apps that are installed ecloud dtube soundcloud mastodon online twitter and open web store so that's basically to remove the shortcuts <laughs> and that's what we have with the ubuntu web remix i might do a dedicated and box video at a later time so that's Ubuntu Web Remix. When I heard about this, I was actually kind of excited, but now after trying it out, I'm a little bit disappointed. I don't really see this project going anywhere. I do like that they include a working Anbox installation out of the box. That's pretty awesome because installing Anbox is a multi-step process and you usually have to do it through snap packages and they do offer that a shortcut to getting a working Anbox installation without all that hassle. With that said, their eFoundation applications is really just a rebranded Nextcloud instance, which anyone can install Nextcloud. I even have a tutorial about installing Nextcloud. I find their open web app store and their web apps to be kind of a, a scam of sorts. I mean, they're just hyperlinks with pretty icons i really don't understand the point i'm not really a big fan of like negatively criticizing an open source free project but i don't see any reason to hype this up i think there's definitely better alternatives to chrome os that are currently out there such as cloud ready you can get the free version of cloud ready which is sort of a working chrome os but at this point, I don't think there's any real open source alternative to Chrome OS because Chrome OS has become more and more exclusive and locked down over time. It's 
the features available on it now are not available as far as I know in any open source instance of it. But I hope this saves some people some time or maybe if you wanted to try out Anbox, this will show you a quick way to do that. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Also, please like and subscribe. I have lots of other videos that are more informative than this one. And I'm a little bit disappointed, to be honest. I, I thought we were going to have something cooler here than what we got. But I, I try not to make something out to be what it isn't. And I hope my honesty will be appreciated. Uh, I will say that the Ubuntu Unity remix from the same developer is a much cooler project and i think i'm going to be doing a review on that as well so if you're interested in that i'll be trying to get that done and you can find me on all the social links below as always i thank you for watching i do new videos on a regular basis i cover open source tech i do distro reviews and i also cover creating music, graphics, and video with Linux. That's what I specialize in. Until next time, I'm Jay, and I thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.